one of the reasons I do YouTube is uh, because I seek validation from people. And because I seek validation from people, I post every single time I post on YouTube. Even this post right now, it is somewhat of a need for validation and acceptance and appreciation from people who don't even know me. Yesterday, I was telling my family that I need help because I feel like drinking. I feel so good. I feel so good not drinking, but... I don't know if I'll post this because every time I post something about being happy about not drinking, I end up so drinking. It means that to seek validation for your attempts to, at improving your own life from others is not a very good trajectory. For the uninformed, it has been a month and 10 days since I didn't drink. I also think I drink a lot because of YouTube. And if I don't, if I was not doing YouTube, then I wouldn't have my friends around me all the time drink. I don't think I would drink alone. Please understand, I'm not an alone drinker. I only alone drink when there is a camera in front of me. I would not drink alone if there is no camera, if there was no camera in front of me. So I don't think I'm that kind of an alcoholic. Um, also, if there was no camera in front of me and I had to drink with a friend, I wouldn't have a friend all the time around me, right, to drink with, maybe once or twice a week maximum. So I would be an average booze head then. But right now, because I have a camera in front of me and an audience who is willing to watch all the time, I find that I end up drinking way more than I actually should, which is quite bizarre, right? And when you are trying to uh, please 5, 10, 15, 25, 55, 105, 210, trust me, there are a lot of you people who message me. Um, actually, no, you know what? There are not a lot of you people who message me, but you get my point, right? When you're trying to please or trying to show your life uh, to an audience, you sometimes end up doing what the audience wants you to do. So for example, if I think I look good in long hair, but everybody in my audience says, no, you look good with short hair, man. You look much better with short hair. Then what will I think? That I will think that the people who are saying that I look better with short hair are right. Whereas in my own heart, I know I look better with long hair. I'm just giving you an example. Similarly, I may think that alcohol is bad for me, but if people keep asking me to drink or have another drink or have another drink, I'll say no to drink maybe five times, 10 times, 20 times, 25 times, but eventually I will get a drink. Just to show you how bad it is for me, even if I post a video on some unrelated topic, people always ask me about my next drink and they will ask me to review Royal Silk and Royal Salute and all that. And frankly, I don't know, man. There are a lot of answers in this universe, in this world, but alcohol is definitely not an answer for all those times. Alcohol could be an answer for a few times because what alcohol actually does is that it numbs your brain. It tells your brain, you know what? You're not going to get what you want, so you might as well just contend with this. You know, so that is what a drug does. A drug allows you to feel a certain way without actually doing the whole nine yards for it. And maybe there is no whole nine yards for it. Maybe there is no way to feel that good. But because drugs allow you to feel that damn good and that damn, you know, amazing in your brain, they alter your brain chemistry. And in your normal life, you will never ever feel that good. For those of you who don't drink and have never been drunk, drunk, drunk in your life, I don't mean drunk. I'm sure all of you have been drunk, but I'm talking drunk, 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 like where you forget every memory and you, uh, you have a headache for two days. That is what I call being drunk, drunk, drunk. I don't think you know what I'm talking about because that is the kind of alcoholism that I indulge in. And I purely do that because I am always seeking validation. So it is a degradation trip. That is what it is, you know. Now, what have I done in these past few days? I've lost a few kilos. I've read maybe five or six books. I have worked out maybe 15 to 20 times. No, I worked out at least 25 times in the last 35, 40 days. No, I worked out at least 32, 33 times in the last 40 days, which is awesome, right? Imagine working out 33 out of 40 days. That's fantastic. And even on days where I did not work out, I, I ran, you know, in a room. Okay, that's the kind of prisoner I am. I think I'm just suited for that lifestyle, I guess. What I'm trying to say is that the inevitable befalls my befalls me. There is a path, there is a degradation trip, which I sense is upcoming. I sense that 
the sobriety period is gonna come to an end. And before it does, this is a note to future comer. Dude, you were here, you were right here, man. On this, on the sofa, you know? You were right here, dude, in this room. You were in your senses, you were feeling so good about things. You did not need validation from others. You did not need booze, you know? There has been no craving. Okay, you know what, I'm lying. Yesterday there was a craving and I went to my parents and I said, I'm really struggling today. And they knew exactly what I'm talking about. Seven days back, my father said to me, um, you know what your problem is? You are drinking too much. I said, dad, I have been sober for a month. And he said, oh, I don't know you are sober. And I felt so hurt in that moment. But even expecting your father or mother to know what you are doing is a kind of validation. You shouldn't seek it from anybody, man. You are here living your own life, you know. Your father and your mother, you are too, I'm too old to ex expect my parents to comprehend what I'm going through. And to, to actually, it's time to give back to them instead of asking for their attention. I think it's my role in life, or it has been for the past year or two, where I give them more than they can give me. And the roles have to change now. And... Um, it is what a man must do, you know. If your parents have taken care of you, it's time you take care of them, man, after a certain age, you know. You got to be for, there for them, you know. And I have kids now. Wow. I have kids who depend on me. And um, you know what? They are secondary for me. For, my, for me, my parents, they come first. But for me, foremost is my own brain, man. And leaving alcohol has been great for my brain. Because I have... I have really, 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 really uh, faced all my demons, a lot of my demons. Let's say if I had a hundred demons in the closet, I faced 70 of them. Facing 70 of your demons is makes you very strong. I'm a much stronger guy when I don't drink. And what do I mean by strong? It means strength. It doesn't mean mental strength. I'm talking about strength which comes from soul. Mental strength is nothing but conviction. Anybody can have conviction. Hey, a pint of beer can give you conviction, momentary con conviction nonetheless, which will imitate your sober conviction. But I'm talking about true strength of spirit and soul and perception. The, and I, I think uh, intellectualizing it can be a bit like second, uh, you know, can feel like a second degree burn. But primarily, you have to instill this. Um, you have to earn that. <laughs> Bye, man.